Hello, everybody. Welcome to chapter 11. So now we're getting into the uh, what the microbial genetics looks like. We're going to talk about both prokaryotic and eukaryotic genetics. Um, we're going to focus mainly on prokaryotic, but we will talk about those modifications that are needed in eukaryotic genomes. So in both eukaryotes and prokaryotes, genetic material is passed from parent to offspring. So remember, the genes that we carry are on our chromosomes, and the chromosome's um, DNA is what houses all of those genes, and DNA is the information of heredity, and so it is passed from parent to offspring. Um, and that information is used to form different proteins. So the central dogma of biology is that DNA is organized into genes, and these genes then can be transcribed. Ah, uh, I can't move my mouse. So DNA is um, organized in genes into genes. And these genes can be transcribed into what we call RNA. RNA, there are three different types, but the specific type that we're talking about is called messenger RNA or mRNA. Um, and this mRNA then can be translated into a functional protein. DNA replication is a semi-conservative process. And what that means is that when the parent strands come apart for new nucleotides to come in, um, producing a new strand of DNA, the new daughter strand stays with one of the older parent strands. And once that new daughter strand is fully produced, they will wind up forming the double helix together. And so that's why it's called semi-conservative because you have one old strand with one new strand. The other two um, hypotheses at the time were conservative replication where um, the parent strands would unwind and each would um, allow for the production of a daughter strand and then those daughter strands would bind together, the parent strands would bind together. Um, and then we had dispersive, which is just really weird. Um, it was Matthew Messelson and Franklin Stahl that did research. Um, they ran multiple experiments, and they were the ones who determined it to be semi-conservative um, in the replication process. So for bacteria, um, replication occurs, well, so... In all DNA, replication occurs in a bidirectional mode. So when DNA replication occurs, the DNA is going to unwind, and you're going to have replication on each strand of the DNA. One running, um, well, both will run in a 5' prime to 3' prime direction, but because of the way the DNA unwinds, you're going to have one strand of DNA replicated continuously, and the other strand is going to be replicated discontinuously. In bacteria, the replication occurs at a place called a replication fork. Um, their DNA is circular, and so they don't have a beginning to a chromosome and an end to a chromosome, per se. They just have a circular chromosome. And in circles, there's no technical beginning or end. But there is a region, a replication fork, where um, replication begins every time. And so um, in one strand, it's going to be replicating 5 to 3. And in the other strand, it's going to be replicating 5 to 3 as well. But they're going to be replicating in the opposite direction because, remember, DNA runs in opposite directions. Um, replication starts at a region called the origin of replication. This is going to be at that replication fork. DNA is supercoiled, so it's going to first have to be unwound by DNA gyrase. Then it's going to be unzipped by DNA helicase. And once we have this unwound and unzipped DNA strand, so it's single-stranded, an RNA primer is going to lay down a short strand 
um, or a, an RNA enzyme called primase is going to lay down a small strand of RNA called an RNA primer. This allows DNA polymerase then to be able to bind. And so this occurs on both the um, DNA segment that runs um, in that three to five prime and the DNA segment that runs the five to three prime. And so here's what it looks like. So here we have the original DNA strand, that blue, and over here is a five prime and over here is a three prime. So down here we'd have that five prime direction and three prime. So remember, DNA is always produced in a five prime to three prime direction and it always has to be attached or it always runs on the DNA strand then or DNA is read in a three to five prime direction. So you have an RNA primer binding here and you have an RNA primer that's going to bind over here. And then DNA polymerase can bind and produce a new strand of RNA or of DNA, I'm sorry, not RNA. And over here, again, the same thing will happen. But if you notice on this side, because the three prime strand is here, as it's opening, we're going to lay down an RNA primer. We're going to lay down another RNA primer. We're going to lay down another RNA primer. And so we produce these tiny little fragments. These fragments are called Okazaki fragments. And this occurs on the what we call the lagging strand of DNA or the discontinuous replication strand of DNA. Um, and so DNA has a continuous synthesis strand known as the leading strand and a discontinuous synthesis strand known as the lagging strand. Oh, and right up here is a video. I'm not going to play it right now for you. Um, but it's definitely a video that you can click on and watch, okay? And it'll explain uh, replication a little bit more thoroughly. So once we get that um, initiation, that RNA primer to bind, and um, DNA polymerase can bind on the RNA primase or on the RNA primer, it's going to... Um, dissolve the RNA primer and add DNA nucleotides. And this process is called elongation. So elongation occurs in a um, five prime to three prime direction. Um, and it's uh, the leading strand is going to be synthesized continuously on the strand where the DNA has a three prime um, free end. The lagging strand is then um, synthesized discontinuously because the free, the free three prime region is not open all the time. And so you produce smaller fragments. And each of the fragments is going to need its own RNA primer. And again, you can watch this elongation video that will help you understand what's going on, okay? The last step then is termination. So termination, once we have replicated the entire DNA strand, then um, the copies are going to be released by another enzyme called topoisomerase 4 that releases. So now we have two circular stranded DNA uh, molecules, one can go into one of the daughter cells, the other will go into the other daughter cell. So replication um, of DNA produces two complete copies. So you have two identical chromosomes, circular chromosomes, um, that each daughter cell will receive one of them. Replication of E. coli takes approximately 40 minutes. But if you remember when we were talking about replication in chapter nine, um, E. coli replication only takes 20 minutes. So how can E. coli replicate in 20 minutes, every 20 minutes, if the chromosomes take 40 minutes to replicate? 
So ponder that for a few minutes. I'm going to stop on this video right here, and then on the next video, I'll give you the answer, okay? So hopefully that like left you at a cliffhanger and you're really excited and you want to get into the next video because now you need to know. So I'll talk to you in a little bit. Bye.